Okay, welcome back. So when we get started, we do want to answer this first question, who do you serve? Like I said before, it is so critical that everything that we're building together uh, starts from the basis of you know exactly who your customer is, right? Because all our marketing must be customer centric, not product centric. Again, that's a writer downer. You're going to hear that theme repeated as we move forward together. Customer centric, not product centric. So to have customer centric marketing, we need to first clarify who our customer is. And there are a number of categories that we're going to look at when we do this. The first category is simple demographics. And this is where most people begin. So we think about our customer, what are the demographics? We're also going to look at what are their hobbies and interests? What's their mood? at the time when they might interact with you and your brand and then what are their big pain points? Now we're going to look at this generically. We're going to begin by testing some of your assumptions. What do you believe to be true today? When we dive in to, to the second unit we talk about uh, conversion funnels and, and, and architecting those conversion funnels and, and, and thinking through the before and after, right? You're going to think about this process in a slightly different way. Again, when, when Molly talks to you about thinking through the hobbies and interests and the big pain points that your customers experience as it, as it relates to uh, paid traffic, you're going to think about it a little bit differently. When Russ talks about what are the big questions that they have that you can answer in your content marketing, you're going to think about this avatar in these categories a little bit differently. But it's not going to change, it's going to augment. It's going to build upon what you're starting today. You're going to begin to know more and more about your customer as we move through this process. But it starts today with just what do you believe to be true? So when we think about demographics, we're going to look at are, is our customer generally male or generally female? Now I know a lot of people say, well, I have both. Okay, that's fine. If it really is 50-50 or if it doesn't matter, right? If, if you're going to talk to them pretty much the same way, whether they're male or female, then maybe this doesn't matter. I know here at Digital Marketer, we're kind of going to talk to you know, business owners, marketing professionals, and agencies the same way whether they're male or female. Okay, so maybe this matters, maybe it doesn't. To the extent that it does, you want to pick. What's their age range, right? Do you know that? Does it matter? Typically blue collar or generally white collar. Again, this is going to impact how you talk to them, the type of languaging that you use. Are you more colloquial or are you more uh, academic? Okay, you just want to be intentional about it from the beginning. What's their salary? You know, what, what salary bracket are they in? And this is an interesting one. Where do they live? Right? If you're going to pinpoint, you know, where do they live? Is, do, they, do they live in a particular area of the world, a particular part of a country? Are they more rural? Are they more urban? Okay? Just thinking through that right now, I want you to picture an individual person. We're going to get to that more in just a little bit. We also want to think about what are the blogs that they read? This is going to become particularly critical when it comes time to uh, acquire traffic. What are the associations that they're a part of, both nonprofit, for profit? trade associations, things like that. What clubs are they involved in? Forums. What are some common forums in your particular space? And, and things around their hobbies and interests. As it relates to their mood, are they generally happy? Or are they generally sad, right? Gonna depend. I, I think most of the customers at Digital Marketer are generally happy, right? Are they more emotional or are they more logical? Now, you're, you're probably looking at this and you're thinking, they're both, right? We have both. Right now, what we're doing and what we're thinking through is what's the general assumption that we're going to make, right? You're going to have to default. You can't be all things to all people in your marketing. So you're going to have to pick. You just want to make sure that you pick strategically. Generally an introverted or generally extroverted and are they generally content or are they generally frustrated, all right? Think about that. Where are they right now today before they meet you? We're going to talk a lot more about this when we talk about architecting conversion funnels and specifically uh, thinking through the before and the after grid. That's coming in a late, later module. All right, pain points. You know, are you in the health space and, and their big pain point is their clothes just won't fit anymore? Uh, are, are you showing them how to grow their business or make more, make more money and their, their big pain point is they can't pay bills or they can't find a job, right? Whatever the big pain point is, you got to know that because so much of marketing is about speaking to that pain point, speaking to where they are, not doing it in a, you know, in a cruel knife twisting kind of way, just doing it in a way where you're meeting them exactly where they are. So again, right now what we're doing is we're making a number of assumptions. All right, we're going to make a number of assumptions about this. I recognize that, um, 
And, and so to the extent that you find that really you have a number of different avatars, then what I want you to do as a part of this action item is I want you to fill out a customer avatar sheet and maybe fill out a couple of them. Okay, so I know, for example, right here at Digital Marketer, we happen to have three primary avatars. Those avatars are uh, small business owners and startup founders. That's kind of one avatar, the business owner and startup founder. Another one is the agency owner, right? So people who own marketing agencies, that's another avatar. And another avatar is the marketing professional. So uh, people who do marketing, typically either for an agency or for a small business. So this is your CMOs, directors of marketing, uh, you know, marketing managers, maybe social media manager, media buyer, those types of folks. So those are our three main avatar. So what we would do is we would print out three copies of this customer avatar sheet. And you can do the same thing. If you're going through the, the graph that we had before and, and you're saying, oh my gosh, the, there's some of them over here and some over here, that's fine. Perhaps you have more than one avatar. But I want you to pick. I want you to start planting flags even if they're arbitrary because the customer avatar sheet that you're going to build today as your action item is going to grow. It, it, you're going to start adding pieces to it. You're going to start understanding. Uh, and in many cases, you're going to start questioning these assumptions. And when we dive into the actual data, which we're going to do in future modules, you're going to find, wow, you know, what I believe to be true wasn't necessarily the case. So this is a pretty simple form. Uh, start out again, and we've already started talking about this, generally male, generally female. What's their age range, marital status, job type, annual salary, hobbies and interests, pain points, mood, all of what we talked about before has now been consolidated onto this simple sheet. Now you may be looking at it and saying, okay, name. Well, I have no idea what their name is. I believe that it's important to give your avatars a name, to start speaking about them as people as individuals, to not view your customer base as this swath of humanity, but to view them as the, in, as the gathering of individuals that they are. So here's what I recommend that you do, and, and it's, it's pretty simple and, and, and kind of fun in coming up with a name. Once you have a general age range, right, so let's say the average age of your customer is 35, okay? So you'd simply subtract and say, okay, 35, that means they were born in 1980, 1981, whatever. So, if we're looking at that, I would go into Google and I would say, and, and let's say it's generally men, I would say most popular, type into Google, most popular boy's name in 1980 or 1981, right? Or around that, that same time. Look at the list, look at the top three, pick the one that you like the best and boom, that's the name of your customer avatar. It's really, really simple, but we found it to be incredibly effective at when we're doing our marketing, making sure that we're talking to an individual. So this is your first action item. Fill out a customer avatar sheet for each of your customer avatars and give them a name, okay? Fill out that customer avatar sheet and give them a name. Once you're done, you can move on to the next video.